because you are so large on the well, I say really? the yes, ma'am, you are very large, and um, first, to see the people like some love you, some hate you, some love to hate you, you know. But what is amazing, you continue as I tell persons, you stick to one highway, and it's the highway which is on the right side of the law. And I've tried to tell persons, I agree with me, Mr. Woman, they're the last year, I'm following up, because you want to go, no politician, and they change the law. But I want to know where you're coming from. Where you get all of this toughness from? And with, a smile, with a beautiful smile on your face, how do you do that? My parents, they believed in the old fashioned um, value system. My mother, I see. Mavis see. Lillian, was a nurse. She really taught me about giving service above self. My father, Clinton Lillian, um, who just passed away, really? we buried him um, yeah. a couple weeks ago on Saturday. He taught me, along with my mother, about the work ethic. The greatest offense that you could commit for daddy was to be lazy. Right? But, but I'm yes. sure I'm older than you. How you have that philosophy? When my father you? died at 98. Really? And he grew up 98. very humbly yes. in Frankfield, Clarendon. No tertiary education. He started as a farm worker. And he used to boast that he was the best picker of oranges what a thing. On, on that farm work program. But you say this a farm worker. Very, what? very reliable. I bet you know, but he was not fool though. Oh, he was very streetwise. And okay. in fact, he seems to have been very well regarded by the bosses and he was regarded as a leader. This is yeah. what he's telling me. So he could pick three times the number of boxes. Yes, yes. And the story is told, he told me that he was a very good cook too that they cooked some hog foot I mean, no, I mean, no, it that. was so bad <laughs> no, that he that. raised head. He, he was very colorful and yes. very flamboyant. And they reported him to the bosses. Yes. And because he had such a good reputation and he was so credible as a picker, they just said, Mr. Llewellyn, according to him, you can go right back <laughs> to what you were doing. <laughs> So, um, he was very flamboyant. Yes. yes. Um, my mother was very strong too. She came off the table of, there's no such word as can't. Don't tell her anything about can't. can't. You know, and the work ethic really, really was very important for them. If I got sick, or my sister got sick, mommy would dose us up. And we have to go to school. So the, if we were really roasting with fever, and the day says you're move, weak in. Well, they said weak in. <laughs> the, if the school would have to call mommy to yeah. say you need to come to her. So the work ethic was very, very important for them. And also speaking the truth. Right? Speak the truth, speaking speak the truth. Cause it um, what it means. That is so. He who it's that just is so. But my mother used to say things like, um, nobody can crack your head and take out what you believe. But hold on, hold on, what you learn on them? Because she would tell us these things. Do you say things tell her? Well, yes. that is it. Because she came from a very strong root. My grandmother was a very strong prayer warrior from Sanguinetti. And, um, you know Sanguinetti? Do you know what things are? You know the church or Sanguinetti? No, she was Anglican. Anglican. So Anglican. I grew up in the Anglican yeah, church. Right. I was school in Canada, and so my well. father's yeah. mother, the both of them are very strong, right. very, very strong women. So they imparted a lot of value, <coughs> character building, um, life lessons to both of them. And they, in turn, um, conveyed this to my So no, no one could have changed you? Well, the thing is, you know, and I think this is part of the problem, why it is that you have so many dysfunctional adults. In those days where the value system, the whole thing about telling the truth, the work ethic, being courteous, being respectful, those are highly valued. But nowadays, a lot of children are not taught that sort no, of thing. No, no. So some of them, a lot of them may be brilliant. They may be technically savvy, but they don't necessarily have that grounding right. in terms of what is acceptable and appropriate behavior. You know, I mean, just recently, I won't say where I went, but here it was, a pretty prestigious graduation was taking place. And this young lady got several awards, and here it was, she went up in her beautiful suit, chewing gum, 
No, so she's Mother there. DP, I don't, I don't yet, I don't yet charge me. There. I'm telling you, she stood there and she's accepting and we hear these accolades and she won this award. And I think she felt that it's cute. But you could still see occasionally. She had to chew. And then when she was walking on the stage, she was chewing. And I said, now look at that. No, I, I, do I, time, I do want your child before I'm professor. I'm a doctor. But I'm not yet. In the same way that when I went to St. Hughes, I went to St. George's Girls Primary on Duke Street. Which is an Anglican school. Oh, that's what they were teaching I Saint went Hughes. to St. Hughes High School yes, in yes. the days of Ines Carnegie oh, yeah. and Miss Thomas. Yeah, boy. And what we were taught as young ladies, you could not spit on the road. You could walk you could and eat, eat on, on the road. road. Oh, I tell you. So why? So you could not mean? eat on the road. To this day, I do not spit on the road. No, they do to, to the car. In fact, you could not litter. And I've taught my daughter the same thing. So what I will do, I may eat a patty and I'm in my car. And I crush up the paper bag and put it in my handbag. Yes, yes. Until I get home and then I dispose can't, of it. Can't get out, so a lot of those old time values um, are not being taught again. And when you check it out, yes. a lot of the children mm -hmm. are being grown up by parents who are not themselves exposed to it. So they don't know any better. The big drama. So you may find that the child is very bright, but here it is. They don't know that if you are going to be going to a function like that and you're going to be accepting an award and so and so, you shouldn't be chewing gum on the stage. They don't know Something better. as simple as that. They don't know better. So unfortunately And the advertis tell you like when you did something on the ticket you know, you leak your dead finger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I mean, that is so. But you see, there's a thing called time and place. A place, right. There's a time and, and a places. place for everything. And that has to do with knowing what is appropriate behavior. And alas, this is part of the problem. And it goes back to the parenting or the lack thereof. Yes, you understand why you have a problem, no? And everybody will blame you, no? No, they can't blame me. I, I operate within the four corners of the law. Yeah. I always, in my public utterances, make the distinction between the court of public opinion and the court of law. Court of law. Sometimes I have to operate as director of public prosecution and as King's counsel, who has some 30 odd years experience mm. as a prosecuting attorney. That there's a part of me that can always empathize, either sympathize with the court of public opinion mm -hmm. and why they may wish to subscribe to the eye for the eye mm -hmm. or the two for the, the two theory. Yeah. But the thing is, I am a trained lawyer. I operate and appear in the court of appeal where I have to defend the prosecutions that were done. Or I may have to concede that there was a misdirection in law by a judge. No, but we don't understand that. To, no, no. The we thing is that in the Court of Appeal, that's where you really learn the law. Mm -hmm. So the Court of Appeal will issue, after hearing um, matters, what we call cases, case law. Right. Right? As an attorney, when you are a law student, in terms of what, for example, if you want to know what the law says about self-defense or provocation or manslaughter, or joint enterprise, or some concept in the criminal law, you have to look at case law. Now, the case law um, gives you what you call precedent. Precedent, right. That can be binding if it's from a court of higher jurisdiction, no court, or no. it will be persuasive. persuasive. So when you, as a defense attorney, or you as a prosecutor, you are going to make submissions, whether at sentencing, hearings, or you are actually prosecuting a case, there are areas of law that will come up from right. what you can see, from the facts that present itself. So if, for example, there is the issue of provocation, which would reduce, if it is acceptable on the facts, a murder matter, which you indict for, to manslaughter, then you have to know what the case is and provocation say. Right. Because you know what the cases say, it means that you can't go outside of that. So the court of public opinion may say, boy, this happened. They read about it in the newspaper. That may give it a very sensational slant. 
but we at the office of the DPP will have to wait to see the file to see what the statements of witnesses are saying, what the pathologist report, what maybe a psychiatric report, uh, what the ballistics report may be saying before we can yeah. make an informed decision in respect of what is a relevant law. Then we, having done that research, then we know exactly what type of submission right. we have to make. All that right. will be within the four corners of the law. We're going to go for the break. You can probably be more specific because as this about Nyamia about over the case a uh, client uh, you know. And um, uh, that is still um no that that's that has that has gone already. So it's well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it is sentencing. Right. The judge is going to give his sentence, but because yes. what I had to say was in the public, it was streamed live. Okay. I can still attempt to further simply explain the law and what's in your respect position of why I was obliged to withdraw the death penalty. Because they say, oh, we can do it, you know. They well, say, no, 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 Listen, listen, mm. listen. We're not. I am an attorney and I'm obliged to act within the four corners of the law. You're not Vernon. Vernon, I, Vernon, I said, if it beats on the no, 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 no. <laughs> if you heard my submissions, yes, yes. you could hear that although they were heartfelt, they were passionate. Yes. But you cannot use emotive language. To the court, the court yeah. I am grounded, or dare I say, I am shackled by the law. Oh, well, we can end on that note. I am not shackled by the law. We chat anything. I I'm shackled by the law. <laughs> that is quite interesting. Well, we're gonna go for the break, you know, right now. So stay with us. We continue this very interesting discussion with the DPP, Paul and Lillian. Vernon, have your friend saying to you, soon come back. Don't move. <laughs> Classic, you know.